if you were to explain harm reduction to someone who has no idea about it, and someone who you think could maybe benefit from it, how would you explain Playing it? safe. That's the only thing, just playing safe. Harm reduction is about reducing uh, risk or harm to yourself. Well, harm reduction is not just about drugs. It's about, it's about giving you the tools to improve your whole lifestyle, really, when you're ready to do it. Harm reduction to me is self-discipline. If it wasn't for the harm reduction room, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. This is a place for people to just come, you know what I mean? I, I, I feel safe here. I feel wanted. I feel understanding. I feel like I can go to them with anything. If it wasn't for them, I'd be out there. And this is, this, this is where I belong. The harm reduction for me is um, you are surrounded by, by women or individuals with like, like similar um, backgrounds. And you have like you, you find co like things that are in common with those people, and like for ad ad most addicts, a lot of it is isolation. So when you have a circle of women that you can go talk to with those those things in common, you don't feel so alone, and it does something for you. It it, it just really it opens you up. It does for your yeah. self esteem. It lifts you. It gives you that especially when you're in that, that shoulder to lean on. You know, when you don't think there's anybody out there that that, that you're alone. You're not. There's other women going through the same things that you are. You know, and right. and and to and to realize that and learn that, it's 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 power. Power. Knowledge is power, right? A lot of people come from broken homes and there's not enough counselors. Where's the counselor that, like I'm 42, where's the counselor when I was molested when I was 10? You know what I mean? Where's that counselor? What, what, what counselor is going to help me now? I'm 42, it's too late. Right? Like nobody's going to help me now, I'm too old. Where back then, when I needed the help back then, it wasn't there, it wasn't available, so I meditate on drugs. My addiction is uh, a pain reliever. Um, I, there's a lot. I have a lot of emotional pain, and um, drugs are a good way to uh, avoid that pain, and even physical pain. It's there's, you know, it has a way of relieving physical pain also. Oh, we all have some for different reasons. You know, we start uh, experimenting. We start because we're naive. Um, you you use them to forget. Uh, sometimes to remember, you know, but um, mostly I find I use it for an escape, you know, it's a, uh, but it becomes a very bad revolving cycle. Uh, 2000, and, wait, 2000 actually, year 2000, my daughter passed away in uh, 1999 and um, I started using drugs and because I couldn't handle the loss and um, my life just was went to a spiral downwards um, uh, where I was self-harming myself. I thought I was worthless. Well, my mother always told me that when I was younger. You'll never amount to anything. You know. So I got that stuck in my head for years. People who, who don't have the addiction problem or who don't have this disease don't understand it. Nobody can understand what we go through unless they go through it themselves. And there's a lot of stigma around us because there are people who rob, people who lie, people who steal, steal, cheat, whatever, to get what they need. But um, these things have a, like a really good hold on us, and a lot of people will do whatever it takes to get it. And other people, you know, they may get hurt by it. So that's you know that's where the stigma comes in. Is well, she wanted to get high, so she stole my wallet or whatever, right? A lot of times it doesn't happen, but you know sometimes it does. And people, those people are very judgmental. And you know what? It's not up to me to judge somebody. I've been judged, and it's not fun. <laughs>